this session um, or this workshop in the previous year. So I'm sure you guys, please engage with her. I told her that it's not about just presenting, but she, uh, you guys are going to engage with her, ask her how she, all the questions. Like uh, if I, one of the first questions I would have asked her if I was also still writing would have been, oh, Katleho, I'm left with um, less than two weeks. What were you doing in these two weeks before you went to sit for what? Which was the day last year for Saika? Was it 4 December still? No, maybe 3 December. So what were you doing between now and 3 December? That would have been one of my questions. So I'm prepping you at least, right? So that uh, you can be thinking about it as you're presenting. That would be my first question to say that what do I do between now and until, uh, not for December actually, what do I do now, uh, before, between now, which is the 16th of November, until the 28th of uh, November before the PRI is released. And maybe what were you doing? Uh, one of the questions which I also get, see, I'm already taking the time. One of the questions which I always get is that, um, how do you manage anxieties, especially uh, during the PRI period and on the day? Because sometimes things happen on the day. Like I am so well prepared and I'm ready. And I get there and I see uh, the likes of our culture. They've got the smiles up on and I'm like thinking, why are they not stressed? And then they make me anxious. So what do I deal with anxiety during the preparation period and on the day? Thank you so much, Katleho. Take it over. Thank you so much, Ele. Good morning to our future CAs. And I am not saying that by mistake. <laughs> um, thank you so much for the opportunity and Jinamo for me to speak this morning. I hope that I'm going to bring good insights to everybody. I've prepared uh, some slides, which I will share afterwards with um, the Njinamo team if anybody wants them. So I'm just going to share my screen please do let me know once you can see it and am i audible to everybody okay see a reaction thumbs up okay Alrighty. Um, good morning again, everyone. Welcome to this morning's session. Um, as Ele has said, my name is Katla Khomabi. I am a recently qualified CA. I am from the Northwest originally. I was born in Mahikeng, but I spent most of my upbringing in the small town of Pochestrum. Um, I attended boarding school there and then I did the entire CA journey on a part-time basis. Um, just before I continue, I will not be able to see your hands. So please just, uh, if you need to ask something, um, can someone just bring my attention if there's a hand during the slideshow? So yeah, because my screen is um, sorry, showing the slide. Okay, so yeah, um, I did the entire CA journey on a part-time basis while I was working. Um, and yeah, I finally qualified after nine grueling years. Yeah. So the first thing um, that I'm going to start with is you need to build your confidence. The first step to becoming successful on this journey is definitely to believe that you deserve to be here. You have made it this far for a reason. Um, I know that during this time, the imposter syndrome might start to kick in. You might start to wonder, but how did I get the certificate? I just, just made it. Maybe you feel like, oh man, I didn't pass all the case studies. I only passed the sub or whatever, but that doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is your board course believes in you and they see that you are confident, uh, you are competent, which is why you have your certificate. So you need to believe it. Um, you need to validate yourself constantly during this time and when you are writing. As you can see for me there in the um, left corner there, I had an alarm set for six every morning that uh, had the caption, you deserve to be a CASA. And just seeing that visually made such a difference to me. Even um, while I was doing my research, I named my folder the Katle Homabe CASA <laughs> APC Research. I know it seems so trivial, but um, I think as 
the closer you get to the end, the more you start to doubt yourself. So um, however you can find ways to validate yourself, I encourage you to do that. Um, yeah, and then I think, okay, um, I'm going to just jump forward to the, the day uh, or leading up to the PRI. Uh, so during these uh, next two weeks, I would say use this time to reflect on your assessments, look at the indicators that you didn't get and ask yourself, why didn't you get it? Was it a technical gap or was it just the way you phrased your answers? Um, that is a good time for you to just understand, you know, uh, why you didn't. If you can do assessments, you can do that. But I think that the number of assessments you've done with your board course uh, is already sufficient for you to try and identify the gaps. And then I would also say um, give yourself some grace. I think during this time of the year, everyone is tired. It's been a long year. You've been writing throughout the year. Work hasn't stopped and, you know, you just want to go into December mode. Um, but uh, in as much as you're reflecting during this time, you still need to take care of yourself. Um, don't burn out in these next two weeks because when the information, um, when your PRI gets released, that's going to be a war in itself. So remember to still get some sleep and, yeah, um, take care of yourself. And then I would also advise you to have consultations with your lecturers. Um, I always uh, tell people this. I think I only had two consultations with Fadi and Rendani <laughs> during my board course, and it was because I was so nervous to ask stupid questions. <laughs> and when I actually got to the session with Rendani, it was so like relaxed and you know, he gave me so many insights. They're not there to judge you and say, how is this person asking this question this late in the game? Just consult them and speak to them and get their advice. I promise you will not regret it. Okay. And then I would also say you should plan your five days during this time. So um, in the top right corner there, you'll see my group and I had a timetable of how we're going to tackle the five days, the time we're going to spend um we're going to spend uh, in our meetings and we were strict to keep to that time because time is definitely of the essence and then um, there's obviously breaks in between and uh, focus time uh, where you research your triggers so I'd say now is a good time for you to plan what you're going to do when you're going to meet uh, and so forth. Um, I took it a step further in the bottom right corner. I had a plan of my meals that I'm going to eat during that time. And I went and I had a shopping list of all the stuff. And uh, I know it seems so uh, pedantic, but the reason I did that was because um, I, I do experience a lot of anxiety. So planning things makes me feel in control and it made me feel, um, you know, I had control of that situation, so it gave me a little bit more comfort. You, it might not work for you. Maybe you get anxious by planning. Um, just uh, figure out what works for you. But this brought me comfort that, you know, I had a routine. I had um, I had my uh, five days planned, and I tried my best to stick to that. Okay. And then next, when you are on leave, please have boundaries. I know, especially those people that are doing articles, someone might call you, be like, what did you do in this working paper? How far was this? Where did you leave this? Um, I would say try your best to have boundaries there, um, guys, because this is the one time that you get to be selfish. I'm sure none of you want to be sitting in this position again next year, as long as this year has been. This is just a few days that you're going to take off to yourself and focus on getting through um, through APC, okay? And then um, get tips from your network. I don't know if there are going to be in-person sessions this year, um, but last year I got a lot of tips, strangely enough, from other people that were writing. One of them was a girl named Tolo uh, Pelisabage. She actually advised me that on the PRI, I'll show you, I still have my file, we'll discuss that later to make hand uh, written summaries of the PRI so that you know it a bit better. Um, so I did yeah, these summaries and then I'll just show you something else. Um, and she also showed me that while I'm reading the PRI and making the, the summaries, 
I hope everybody can see it. I just have a page here, basically with a column down the uh, a line down the middle. So on this side of the column, I wrote what we what was happening on the IOD per trigger. I mean the PRI per trigger. What was happening, and then on the day, I would write like if there's any changes, I would make notes on the side. It's quick while you're reading. Just you know any notes. Um, of what you see has changed on the day so that you're more present. So that that I actually got at the workshop, this advice, and it helped me to see the, the changes side by side per trigger. Okay, so that was that on that. Um, yeah. And then on the day before your PRI, oh, sorry, I missed one. <laughs> Plan the day of your assessment. Um, so know the route that you're going to take to your um, exam center. If you can go drive by there, especially if you've never been to Gallagher or ever before, just go past and see where it is, where you're going to be parked and so forth. Um, and then, yeah, uh, plan your travel time. Obviously, leave some leeway for any anything that might happen on the day, um, traffic, et cetera. So plan your day and then on the day before your PRI, I know it sounds crazy, but you need to relax the day before. I read a post on LinkedIn where a lady said that the day before her PRI, she decided to book a spa day and just relax and go for a massage. And I read that post. I'm like, this is this is about a week before the PRI came out. And I'm like, this is crazy. How could she even get herself to switch off like that? But then I was like, let me try this. And I also booked a massage and um, that helped me to feel so relaxed and so ready to tackle the five days. It might not be a massage, but whatever you find helps you relax, do that the day before, because after that, it's going to be hectic. You're going to be focusing and reading a lot. So just give your body that chance to reset and be ready for those days. I'm Is sorry, it Katleho. Yes. There is a request um, on the comment, and yes. I think um, I'm not sure if you're doing slide show because yes. it also shows your next slide. Oh, and okay. because it's doing Sorry. that, it has minimized um, the slide. Okay, let me just try and fix that. Sorry about that, everyone. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry. No, wait. Right. And then when you do slide show, yeah, maybe just it do goes any. Um, let me try something else. Otherwise, you can also just drop your slides um in the chat. I okay. think, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I just shared the wrong screen. Okay. It should be fine now. Let's see. Yes. Is it better um, now? Yes, it's much better. Thanks. Okay, great. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, okay, so um, is everybody still good for now, apart from the slides, or are there any questions on this slide? Okay. I'll move on to the next one then. Okay, and then, oh, I see a hand, Prince. I got the call. Um, in terms of planning your time in your pre-release, yes. um, how do you know how much time to allocate for obviously each um, email or task uh, part for that pre-release? Because I think that's maybe the battle I'm having. I would imagine that you don't have, you don't allocate an equal amount of time to for example, industry research as you would for an accountant. Um, yes. Um, is Gracious going to speak again this year? And I'll explain why I'm saying that now. No, but oh, what okay. we can do is that we'll, we can, um, for endonormal candidates, they yeah. do have um, the sessions. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh. Yes, yeah, okay. for endonormal candidates, they do have the sessions. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So we had a a presentation last year where the um the uh gracious ex, uh gave us a a, ta a per task timetable, and I I still have it here with me. 
but I don't know if I can share it because obviously it's not my slides, but basically you just um, think of the different scenarios. So we had a scenario of seven tasks, eight tasks and nine tasks. So if you had seven tasks on the day, you would allocate um, one hour per task for um, six tasks. And then the one, the lighter task, you'd allocate 55 minutes um, and then you take a five minute break. So the total time is uh, 420 minutes. I think this include, excludes an hour of reading time. So, um, and then if you have eight tasks, you'll have two big tasks that you spend an hour on, and then you um, have five other tasks, which you spend 50, uh, 50 minutes on, and then one lighter task, which you spend 45 minutes on. So you basically just take that 40, 420 minutes, and you divide it by the number of tasks. So obviously, if you have up to nine tasks, you'll cut down at, um, the number of, of minutes for some of the tasks to be um, the, le the least I think you can do is 40 minutes per task um, that you will then allocate to, to your tasks. Um, and then you, but not all of them, I think. Two of the tasks is 50 minutes, three of the tasks is 45, and three tasks is 40 minutes um, based on the number of tasks. I, I, maybe I'll just ask for Gracious's permission to share this because that's what we use, what I use in, in my day. Um, or in my, when I was doing that, it was very helpful. But yeah, the number of times is 40, 420 minutes. So you just have a but little thing. Talking, sorry, I was also talking about uh, in the, sorry, maybe I, I didn't present my question properly, but in the pre-release phase, yeah. um, the, I mean, based on the triggers identified actually, like yes. how, how much time would you spend doing, for oh. example, industry research, how much time would you spend maybe on the triggers identified depending? I don't know if that's a realistic question to ask. Oh, no, understood. Yes. So for my industry research, um, so there on top, you'll see uh, I spent about, uh, so it's between reading the PRI and the industry research, I think by, on my timetable shows they're from 8 to 11. Um, so, but I started a bit earlier. I think I started at 7. Um to read the the PRI, you'll have to read that a few times um, and, you know, digest it and so forth. Um, the first time you, my what my mentor advised me last year was to first read it once, no making notes, no nothing, just reading it as, you know, you would read a book. And then the second, uh, and take a walk for like five minutes, eat an apple, whatever you want to do, then come back and read it again and um, make your notes. And then after that, you can do your research industry research, I was doing it as I was reading it, up, I think the third time, um, thinking of what I want to research. So about maybe three to four hours. I don't think the industry research needs that much time. Um, the, the most, the need is definitely in the case study knowing and doing that research. Um, and then, yeah, and then as you can see there, I think I spent, um, sorry. Oh, I think that someone's unmuted. And then um, I think about oh. the first, on the Friday, I think I did uh, two of the triggers. Saturday, I did one, um, no, two, two triggers, and then Sunday, another two. Like Monday, I was already kind of completing my research. Uh, Monday, I was just doing the, the last bit of research. And then on uh, Tuesday, it was mostly printing printing my file. Uh, and and reading it on the last day. So definitely Tuesday, I wouldn't allocate any time to research, more like going through your file, printing it, getting familiar with what's in there. I don't know if that answers the question. Yes, yes, but how so quickly though? Because I feel like, I'd, I don't know, maybe you have a different approach as to how to limit your time in terms of your triggers. But for me to take so much time to actually for example, do my industry research and do you do you start with industry research? I did start with it, yes. But we were yes, yes. Let me just say I started with that. But again, I don't want to dictate to you um how to do it because it might not work for you. It might, as you say, you feel like it takes longer. So I'm not gonna tell you to reinvent the wheel now. What's been working for you during your assessments? Were you with the Ingenomo program or were you with another program? 
Yes, I was with Ingenome. So what I'll say is the Ingenome structure is so similar to APC. So if what's been working for you, what's been working for you with the Ingenome um, assessments, keep doing that because you might find you'll make yourself anxious now trying to change the routine that you're already used to. So if you feel that the number of the amount of time you've been spending and it's gotten you to a competent stage is what worked for you, then do that. Thank you, guys. All right. Maybe just to add, um, and I think one of the other aspects which you are, are referring to, for those maybe who have not uh, watched the video, uh, those who are with Enunamo, there was a session about active reading, um, because that truly assists when you, um, in terms of how much you may be getting from reading your PRI, uh, mm -hmm. because the more you don't get what you're reading on the PRI, it means that also when you research, that's when... Um, on Thursday and Unati was saying that you're going to go on a rabbit hole. Therefore, it means that the time which you're also allocating for a, for a particular PRI could be now overly too much. And also, if you go back, even with the industry research, I believe Elton covers it when he's going through the critical thinking um, uh, slides. Uh, oh, my apologies, Dr. Elton. I don't <laughs> because um, he covers it when he's going through critical thinking. And it's those aspects. Um, also, if you're with Endunamo, maybe go through, and even here, go through the reflection uh, videos because they also do cover in terms of how do you also go about on a particular trigger, the trigger analysis. And maybe also uh, consider going through the reflection, which both um, for this task, I think it will be Amanda and team would have gone through it. And for the entire uh, workshop, uh, there is um, reflection videos which you guys can also assist. I hope that helps, Prince. Okay, um, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Okay, I don't have much time left. Um, and then when you receive your PRI, for me personally, what worked was getting an early start to my day. Um, most people uh, prefer to do like an eight to five or um, you know, eight to six. But um, for me personally, it was better for me to get an early start every day. Um, so if that's if you're an early riser, that might work for you. But again, do um, the routine that works for you. Try your best to stay in in what you were already doing. Don't try and change things now too much. <laughs> Um, yeah. And then secondly, know your PRI, like I, like Ella was also saying, that is a very important document that you're going to also refer back to in um, your uh, on your assessment day. Don't think that you're reading it and it's a little compartment there in your brain. It's very much an active part of your your on the day assessment. So know it, know it as if you're in that business and make it real for yourself. Um, and then also research all the triggers for yourself. I'm sure all the other speakers have also said this. They said it multiple times to us in last year's workshop. Don't rely on anyone else's work. As much as you are getting, you know, insights from your group members and you're sharing things with each other, you also need to know that stuff per on a personal level um, and understand all of the triggers and why things are in your file. And then thirdly, don't overwhelm yourself with information on the day. I know there are WhatsApp groups, there are different people doing other courses and, you know, everyone is sharing everything. But during your PRI um, time, just remember that, you know, what you are doing has been working for you. And it's great to have external um, insights from people, but don't that make that now make you doubt yourself um, because yeah I realized that during that time people are sharing documents every five minutes things are being sent in the WhatsApp group so don't overwhelm yourself take what you can but also just stick to what your plan is then again like I said if you are on WhatsApp groups keep that to a minimum going in and out don't break your focus no, as you're doing research is there a question I think someone's unmuted no you can proceed okay and then um, on the majority of day five, like I was saying, spend that day preparing your file and reading through it and getting familiar with what is in there. I know it feels like you're losing a few hours or a day, um, but it is really important because as much as you have your file with you, there's not a lot of time to page through your file and look for things. So it's more of a, you remember, oh, this was there and then you open quickly and go check. But it mustn't be that now you are still finding things on your day. Read your file as much as you can. And um, you can even make one page summaries of your research so that you don't have to page to 
through too many things on the day. And then on day five, again, go to bed early, get enough rest. But the day of the assessment is a very long day. Um, you're going to be sitting for um, more than eight hours actually there on your uh, seat, uh, uh, considering the wait time before and after. So get enough sleep so that your body is ready to tackle that day. Don't be studying and burning the midnight oil. And then get into the mindset of a business owner who wants to do what's best for the company. Like I was saying earlier, make the scenario real for yourself. You are an employee of this company and obviously you want this company to succeed. So as you're thinking of the strategies and the plans for your for the company, you need to think what would be best for this business, whether on all aspects, legal, strategic, strategic financially, all sorts. Yeah, think of that as you're reading your PRI. Then um, your file and material for the day. Um, you don't need to have a big file. So this was the size of my file. Only put in the necessary information in your file, the things that you have actually interacted with in your file. Um, yeah, I think um, more people will probably speak on this, but yeah, um, it's important that you, again, don't overwhelm yourself on the day and be paging through things you don't even know on the day. So put what you need. Then have a schedule uh, for your tasks. That's the schedule we were discussing earlier. Just take the number of possible tasks. I think the most that someone has seen in the exam is nine tasks. So plan for maybe six, seven, eight, and nine tasks, how many minutes you'll spend. And then obviously on the day, as you receive your IOD and your tasks, once you've read them, you'll quickly allocate the minutes to the one you think might um, uh, need that amount of time based on the complexity or how you think how much time you'll need to how much information you'll need to put down that's when you'll then put the number of minutes so have that printed that schedule have it printed in your file so that you don't have to first think you'll just check okay I have six tasks this is how many minutes I can allocate and write it quickly next to each tasks okay then I've already said, um, or I haven't said, uh, have dividers in your file for each trigger that you've researched so that you can also easily navigate um, in your file. And while we're on the um, dividers, I just want to show you guys the, the um, what is it, the affirmations that I'm, I'm talking about. So in my file, in front of each divider, I had that uh, CASA written. Um, I found it to be a nice touch for myself, um, but yeah, whatever works for you, you can do, but the dividers are a good idea. And sorry, I went back a bit, you know, forward a bit. Um, and then print out the latest exchange rates uh, that are relevant to your business, as well as the prime rate and repo rate. You never know if you'll need it. Um, so yeah, because sometimes maybe they'll do a conversion in the paper and you and they use a rate that doesn't make any sense so if you know what the actual rate is it's good to just go back and say i see you've used this rate but the rate is this much so is this realistic maybe it's a forecast or whatever um and then another thing that i didn't have in here on my slides is to print out the formats of the different types of documents a memorandum an email um all those just have them in that same maybe divider to see what the format looks like on the day so that you don't have to again remember what a format of a memo looks like you already just have it there for yourself okay um, and then make one page summaries of your research. This will help you for quick reference because, again, you don't have a lot of time to read your file. Um, and then also don't leave your IFRS and auditing standards or your tax legislation at home. I remember there was an assessment that Ingenoma did. Obviously, you'll still have done the research, but they did like a tax calc where they were quoting the sections. And when you're doing your tax research, you won't, uh, exhaust all the sections of the tax legislation so they were quoting the tax sections and I, I i had my tax list there so you could uh, obviously quickly go check what does this section say is it really right so yeah please um don't leave your books behind as much as you have your file you never know if they'll quote things to you that you didn't have in your research um then lastly have a checklist for yourself in your file to see that you've um addressed everything in your task so the checklist that i had it's a quick one, 
um, it's nothing complex. So all I had on my checklist, and I just need to find it. Sorry. Um, Guys, I'm having a lot of technical issues. So I just had a checklist that said, did I have, did I ad address the technical things? Did I address all the components of the task? Was there some critical thinking, business acumen, and is my format right? So if you just have that checklist in front, then you just make sure again that you've addressed everything that they will look at as they are marking your paper. Okay. Then um, last slide on the day, um, keep calm. Um, there's going to be, like Ellis said, a lot of people that are doing different things and you're wondering, does this work better? Does this make them calmer? Do what you know works for you. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. Um, just regulate yourself, basically. There's going to be things that throw you off, but or that try and throw you off, but don't do it. Um, don't give in to that urge to um, panic. And then also believe that you're going to pass the exam. When I tell you guys that up to the day, I was like, I don't know how I got here. I don't know how I got here, but I kept telling myself I'm going to pass this exam. Um, I mean it. So just affirm yourself. Just remind yourself that you made it thus far for a reason. You've passed all your assessments for a reason. So don't now start thinking that you can't do this. Um, and then be early. And I said this in the I said this in another session in the past. On the morning of my assessment, I actually forgot my laptop and my admission letter at home. So I left home at I think six in the morning. <laughs> And as I'm driving into Midrand from Boxburg, by the way, I realized, no, I left my laptop. I left my admission letter. And luckily, I was early enough. I think I got to the venue at 20 past six. I was early enough to call my husband and say, listen, I've forgotten what I actually need to write with. And he was able to, you know, come make it still with all the traffic and all that he was able to bring my laptop and I was still on time. So it sounds crazy, but being early does help to just give you comfort and make you feel comfortable that, you know, you're here on time. Even if you're sitting in the venue for another hour, it might help you to just, you know, get into that mode and then stick to your allocated time per, um, per task as you're writing. That's very important because you think I've done all the speeches, I have to put this down. And then you take away from another task where the indicators were actually so easy, you could have gotten them all. If you want to put those things down, still move on from that task, keep to the time. And then if you have time at the end, you can come back and put it down. But please don't make that mistake of dwelling on one task, thinking you did so much research and this is the one. Um, yeah. And then be prepared to physically write Anything can happen. Your computer can fail you. It can crash. So take maybe a few pens. If you need highlighters, all of that, take it with you in case you need to write physically. Um, and yeah, practice the <laughs> wrist exercises. And then um, please take a break during the day. I know it's going to feel like you can't stop, but even if it's for five minutes, just to stretch your, just stretch your legs and get the blood flowing again, maybe take a walk to the bathroom. Please do it because it's a very overwhelming day. You feel your body goes through a lot. Um, you feel tired. You feel tense. So take that five minutes somewhere between um, the tasks to just yeah regroup. And then second last is pack snacks that are easy to eat while you're writing. Honestly speaking, I didn't even get to eat the lunch that I packed, but maybe a few snacks you can eat them while you're writing um, for some sustenance. I only ate my lunch when they were collecting the papers because we sat there for about another hour. So yeah, um, pack some, some easy to eat snacks and hydrate. Obviously not too much that you need to go to the bathroom the whole time, but do drink some water on the day. And then I'm going to leave you with these two quotes, one from Maya Angelou that says, we may encounter many defeats, but we must not de be defeated. And the only guarantee for failure is to stop trying. So I'm going to say it again. You might get a surprise on the day for one task or see things that you didn't expect or forget your laptop like me. 
but please don't let that um, make you stop trying. Just keep going, keep taking each task as it comes. Don't think about it when you're writing the next one, just keep going. And I promise you, you will make it. Okay, thank you. Now I will um, leave some time for some questions, if anybody has any. Tony Pile. I think I need to go out of the slides so I can see all the hands. All right. A mistake. Okay, first question, David. Hi, Hatego. Hello. My question is about uh, group discussions. How long were your group discussions? with your team members and any advice around group discussions? Um, okay, yeah, the first advice would definitely be to stick to the time you allocated. And I think we spent at most about three hours um, in our sessions. I think we discussed one task for an hour I mean, one research or trigger for an hour, and then we'd leave half an hour for uh, um, questions and then another so we do two tasks at a time so we do three hours at a time and I think we had uh three sessions with each other where we discussed the research so yeah um again if uh, how have you been doing it now with your group have you found that you guys go over time or spend a lot of time in your in your uh, discussions uh, not necessarily spending too much time but I was just wondering what um what idea? Okay. Yeah, so that's what worked for yeah. us. Um, maybe discuss it with your group and see if that's feasible for you guys. But yeah, don't get involved in lengthy debates and so forth. Be there to give each other information. If you want to correct each other, do so. If someone doesn't want to take your point, then you move on and they will go and read for themselves. Yeah. And meeting on the Monday. On the you Monday. Met three times on which day? Uh, we met on the, I'll tell you now. So we met on the Friday um, to, oh, we actually met four times. So we met on the Friday to discuss our triggers to see if we've all um, identified the same triggers. And then Saturday we didn't uh, meet. Sunday we met and Monday. So it is three times. Sorry, we met Sunday, Monday to discuss the triggers. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. And then next morning. Uh, morning. Morning. Larry. Yeah, well done and morning everyone. So but I'm always conflicted with uh on the day IOD. Yes. Reading uh the entire IOD or reading task by task, right? I've tried both uh mm -hmm. within the number this year. Yes. So I'm still not sure which one works, but I just want to uh, gauge how you went through on the day did you go through the entire or you, you went task by task um i went through the entire the entire idea I took the first hour to read and i read the tasks as well thank you i guess it works for you but yeah thank you <laughs> but yes like i'm saying it, it it depends what works for you i'm not here to tell you do things this way i'm just here to advise what worked for me but if you find you reading task by task then that's fine there's no wrong way of doing it let you i think you're unmuted I mean, you're muted, sorry. Which letter is this? I don't know, there's a hand up. Yeah, it's you, Letu, the one who's speaking. No, 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 it's a, it's a, okay. I did not raise my hand, sorry. No problem. All right. Right. If there are no hands, I am gonna just quickly help uh, Gatleho with some of the uh, comments on the chat. So I'm going to be a PA. You're the CEO, I see it. So <laughs> um, you'll be able to pay my rate. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So one of the I'll questions is that um, if you find yourself not uh, finishing the paper most of the time, is it a bad idea to sacrifice a task and do the bare minimum? I have my response to that, but I would like to hear yours. <laughs> Um, no, that's not a good idea. Um, you have to address all the tasks. So if you don't do all the tasks, that's automatically uh, you're not competent. Um, so you won't you won't pass. So please do all the tasks, and that's where allocating your time is the most important, and sticking to the time you've allocated. All right. Thanks. I think just to add on that, um, and I think Mark, a couple of assessment is that. I've seen people have two lines because they're doing the bare minimum. If you do the two lines, now you're saying you must be guaranteed that you're going to get at least one indicator because if it's an NC, that's also an automatic fail. So where you would have gotten your C, um, it would not matter. So um, doing the bare minimum for a particular task, um, sometimes it may work, but it's just a bit, a bit of a big of a gamble. Because now if you wrote one line or two lines, you must be guaranteed that it is a positive indicator. It is a valid indicator. Because if it's not, yes, you didn't get NA, you're going to get NC, which again, also that is just a total um, failure. One of the questions is that do we all meet in the morning or in the evenings? Oh, the question is do we meet in the morning or evening? Yes. Um, so we met, it was a mixture. So we had some evening sessions and morning sessions. So it's, it's a preference thing, really. Yeah, and I think this is maybe one of the things which the team needs to, as a team, they, you, you guys need to discuss now so that there's yes. no one person saying that I'm not a morning person, I'm not an evening person. As a team, you need to discuss now and agree the times which you're going to meet. And um, this is the part of planning of saying that you don't want to be now arguing about the time you meet during the PRI period. You guys need sure. to agree now um, so that there is seamless going forward. Um, there is. I see John. John, do go ahead. Uh, morning, Patlio uh, and the team. Um, morning. My question is, um, normally they would want to, to respond to a task per, per email. You find that we have maybe several emails. So mine is to find out if I can use maybe information from a, the other email, if maybe it's relevant, for an example, wherein maybe uh, uh, referring to the 2023 APC task, whereby maybe they wanted to um, uh, distribute some, some uh, dividends to, to the Mm -hmm. The shareholders at the same time they had some future initiatives, but that was on the on the other task. So should I then maybe use the information that I've obtained from the the other task mm -hmm. to also uh, answer the the other task? I think it will also maybe help the colleague that also asked that if yes. I maybe read the IoT, should I read maybe per task or read the entire um, uh, paper so that I can get the understanding of the of the information at large or maybe focus only on the task that I want to attempt first and then in that in that uh, form. So yeah, that's what I wanted to maybe find out. Okay. Um so most of the tasks are um I mean, most of the emails will generally come from one person. So I think it also just depends on the context. If you're getting an email from a person who also sent the other email and said that, I, I think you can refer back. But obviously, if you're talking to another person and they're not the one who said that and maybe they don't even know about that email, again, we're thinking practically, then um, it it won't, I don't think it will be as fitting. But yeah, um, it just depends on the context. But yeah, you can't, you can refer to other other emails in a in another task. I think you will you would still get if it's an indicator, you probably get it. Uh, and then uh, does that answer your question, John? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. And then I see Busisiwe, you are next up. Um, so my question is more in line with exam strategy. So I am a repeat candidate mm -hmm. and I believe that the reason why I didn't pass the last time was because I went in the order of the tasks mm -hmm. and that didn't align with like my strong points. Okay. So what I decided to do this year was to go with what I'm more comfortable with 
And then I managed to get a C with that. But I just wanted to ask, like, is that a good approach going into the psych exam? Because I know that it has been mentioned that there's a reason why psycho puts the question in a certain order or is just that like a philosophy of some sort? I'm not sure if psycho has any um, reason where they put the, where the task the way they are, but I have also done where I've addressed um, different tasks in a different order. So okay. if that works for you, then I think it's okay. Okay, thank you. All right, Ryan? Good morning. Morning. I want to find out uh, when it comes to the audience. Let's yeah. have a situation when it comes to the audience. The audience, yes. Let's take, for example, the CFO is requesting you to, to draft something that he's going to present uh, to the board or maybe to the chairperson of the audit committee, for instance. Looking at it, let's take, for example, we know that. The CFO is a technical person because maybe it's also a CA, but ultimately, maybe a day after your presentation, it will be presented to the board, for instance, where you know that it's a mixture of different expertise. So now, will my audience be the CFO who is technical enough to understand my standards, my accounting, my expertise in all other areas, or I need to make it more of an of a high level, considering oh. that ultimately it will land with the board. Okay. Who is my audience between the two? I think that here the context will definitely be very important. So I think you could possibly get something like, I am preparing the slides. Here are the slides. Please review my slides. This is what I'm going to be presenting to the board. Then you know this is what's going to end up with the board. And um, maybe um, depending on if they're saying prepare, the, for example, if they're saying prepare the slides, obviously, you know, that's the end product. They're going to see that. But if you're reviewing his work, you're telling him fix that. You you're advising him. You're reviewing his slides. So it depends if you're doing a memo for the board or if you're doing a slide for the board or are you doing it to that person specifically. So you really need to read carefully what they're saying um, in terms of what 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 you're doing. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. But let's take, for example, the CFO is requesting to say, may you please assist me with the following aspects? One, two, yeah. three, four. As I am preparing uh, for a presentation to the board. So I'm saying here, mm -hmm. my CFO, I can be as technical as I want to be, knowing yeah. for sure that he is going to rework on the presentation for the board. Yeah, so obviously then they're okay. going to read it and yeah, and re-prepare it. So they'll be reading it and preparing the, the, the presentation. So you'll be addressing him. Thank but you. if he's saying you're doing the slides, you're doing the slides that he's going to use for the board, then you you target it at the board. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Prince, you have a hand up? I got that for yes. Um, so I think in my situation, I don't know if time management is the main problem, is that in my time allocated, Mm -hmm. So you'd obviously allocate one hour, for example, for your major task. Yeah. And then I'd, in that first hour, for example, in the exam, you find that I haven't done much to worry me now moving on to the next question. What do you do in that situation? Um, do you then go say, cut, move on? Because at some point, yeah, because I think that first, that first exam, task is hard in the sense that you're still anxious and trying to get something. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think that's the struggle that I'm having. What do you do in that sort of situation? Um, thanks for that question, Prince. I would still advise you to move on because remember, any time that you now additionally spend on this task that you feel you haven't done enough, you're now taking away from another task that time and you could have maybe gotten more indicators in another task um, and remember you will still get indicators most likely for what you have written even though you don't feel like it's enough you haven't put down everything go on and then 
there will be some lighter tasks where you might finish a bit earlier, then you can go back. If you see you've got a bit of time, extra time, you can go back then to that task and add on to that. Thank you, Katla. And then um, that first hour, do you have that struggle of settling in or is it a, are you able to streamline your answering there? Uh, of settling in the first hour I'm writing or the first hour in, in general? The first hour of writing. Um, I, I personally, I didn't, but I think, yeah, I, I'd already, like I said, I, I got there relatively early. So I kind of just um, got my mind ready because I was there. But earlier um, I read and I, was, and I felt like I was okay to start. So maybe try that. See that if you've, sit, if you've, if you've sat in your chair and you've prepared yourself mentally, you might get into it a bit quicker. Um, maybe, yeah. But I, I I hope that helps. Thank you, Katya. I think that would help. Thank you. Okay. Rejoice. My my audible. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, sure. No, thank you. I wanted to ask. Um, uh, okay, so I have two questions, right? Um, first one, <laughs> excuse me, I wanted to ask how much time did you find to be reasonable for accounting? Because, and I know, I know with speaking to the colleagues also that we work with in groups, some they say, okay, never exceed an hour, right? And then some they say, you know, when you're dealing with an accounting task, um, you know, it's okay to go over an hour. So did you have um, a deadlock um, time spot where you say, I never exceed this one for accounting? Uh, I think let me just give you a moment with this one, then I can ask my, uh, my second question. Thanks. Okay, oh, okay. Um, okay, so in terms of how I allocated my time, personally, it wasn't based on this is accounting, this is math. Um, it was really based on what I'm reading, how much work I need to do, and um, you know how how complex is this going to be so that's how i allocated my time i didn't base it on because this is accounting i must spend an hour so i would encourage you to really um read and you know already how much time you spent researching and how much you need to put down so really look at on the day what are you receiving what are you being asked for how complex is this how much thinking am i going to have to do how much typing am i going to have to do and allocate it based on that don't don't um limit it to this is accounting so therefore i must spend an hour because i think my other i think i actually allocated 50 minutes last year to one of the accounting tasks um so yeah um i i think be present don't just think of it of this, it's the subject and therefore it must be an hour. I hope that helps. Um, yeah, sure. Thanks. Thank you. And then my last question is, how important is it to cross-reference source documentation to each other on a day? Uh, on the day? And I'll make a quick example. So with last year, we had um, doc document A, right, where they were speaking about the, the lease, right? Then there's on time and then they just mentioned the, the, it's 18 months and they say the lessor, right? But in that approach, I was doing that um, holistic read of the scenario before I attempt. So by the time I got to document E, I recognized that they did identify um, the lessor um, for the wet lease, which was um, Jenny Ops. So I'm just thinking, and I know it links with, I think, two previous speakers in terms of linking information to each other. But now another challenge that I have when I read everything at the start is that come two o'clock, three o'clock, I would have forgotten that information that I read at the beginning, and I would have to reread again before I I, uh, maybe not to the length or detail, but I have to read again before I start responding. So I just mm -hmm. want to understand. So I, I do find that by reading per task, read, attempt, read, attempt, everything is still fresh in my mind and I am okay. able to finish I am able to finish the paper that way. So that's my approach, but I also want to understand in terms of how important is it to Saika that I also link the information or cross-reference it to each other in terms of pulling that background context on the day. Yeah. Um, um, lot, I think um, Randani is going to cover that because mm -hmm. where you have actually particularly touched, he is going to do that task key. And um, he was also just noting the, the importance of referencing from the different documents. But mm -hmm. uh, maybe briefly, because I need to also, I'm starting, we're starting to eat on that time. Um, got three more minutes, uh, Grace minutes. Um, briefly, maybe. Um, and yes, you're saying that you used to read 
the entire IOD. How yes. did you still remember it at three o'clock? Okay, yeah, so I think that's where that um, summary helped me, where I made that column in the middle and then I wrote as I was reading. So those notes what were what helped me to remember by the time I got there, yeah. So making Great. notes. All right, great. I see there is one more question. Can I ask uh, the person who has one more question to type it in the chat box and Gatlejo will respond before Renan jo um, uh, jumps in. But Gatlejo, I'm going to put you in a spot and mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I am sorry. I'm going to play a clip. A, oh, can, let me get my, your consent. Can I play a clip? It's mainly okay. your a clip of your last session on one <laughs> of your consults. Um, okay. And this mainly maybe is um, to say that, because you're saying that people who ask what do you discuss in the consult, it doesn't have most of you. It has got most of Brandani as you're playing. You guys should tell me if you can hear, because um, I'm not sure how my sound is playing. Just let me know if you can hear. Um, and I think for, for us, we, we always have confidence in that. The people that you were sure already made when it now got to the Can you hear? exam that might have yes. jeopardized oh. their, their chances. Maybe, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, to, to, to be honest, uh, and I think that's a very good question, especially at this point. Um, and I think for, for us, we, we always have confidence in the students that we certify. Um, and actually, because the, 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 there's consistency in their performance and improvement from each and every case study. Uh, so my, my biggest advice is always to, to really trust in the process that you followed mm -hmm. in the program, uh, which then brings me to, the, to some of the shortfalls that I generally see. So come now, I generally see candidates acting as if they are, have not gotten that certification themselves, mm -hmm. acting as if they don't have a hold and confidence in their own process. And with everything, and I think I remember someone saying that I was so surprised about the number of material that were just coming at me. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were like, there was this group, there was this file, there was this file, and they said it just overwhelmed them. And they ended up now dropping what they know and what had always worked for them in the program. And then just saying that, hey, please send me this, please send me this. And they didn't, end up, and they said they didn't end up going to put in the work and following their own process as they normally do. So, so that is one of the most important thing to say that uh, you are here because of a good reason. And I want you to have confidence in the process that you follow to get here. Um, and I remember even last time when you were saying, yeah, it, it, that it, this is your first time and yeah, you, you, it took a while to just figure it out. Mm -hmm. and, and now that you are here, I really want you to, to, to leverage that to say, I now know how it works. If you give me a review, I know what it needs to do. If you give me a trigger, I know how to do a trigger and so on. And those were some of the things that we spoke about last time. So, so I'll really want you to, to just have confidence in that. Um, and, and, and as I said the other time that, yeah, the, the files in themselves are not bad, but they're bad if now you're dropping your own process and not using them to perfect that process, but now using them as your primary source of guidance. So that's number one. Then number two, because sometimes, um, we will we will leave the number two for Katleho. So Katleho was asking, uh, maybe in response, she was asking what must she do going forward? And I think the reason I'm playing this clip is because she kept on saying that, I am saying this, but use what worked for you. And I mm -hmm. think this is the biggest advice. And I think some people ask to say that if, um, this is gonna sound controversial, but I'm gonna say it. If I've gotten my C, how do I go struggle at, Psyche, and sometimes it's just that part you dropped your process. You dropped your process, and you got confused in now hundred files which are coming through. And one of the things which Katleho said is that everything which is in my file, I needed to make sure that I have interacted with the information, so that I do not overwhelm myself. 
with that, Rendani is already saying that I'm um, eating out his time, but he's <laughs> gonna um, maybe just last word. He's gonna start sharply at nine ten. Last words for me. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, all the best, guys. You can really do this. I was just a regular person who was getting LCs in the beginning of the program, and yeah, I just kept believing, and like she said, I kept um following the process so keep doing what works for you don't try and copy other people you are more than competent and more than able indeed thank you so much thank you so much Katleho. and i um, truly appreciate that you keep on uh, also showing up for our candidates this is the second time you come through i uh, truly appreciate it uh you're contributing to the profession um I, I truly appreciate it and the team also do, do also um uh, appreciate it as well uh, just maybe quickly, just two minutes. Um, Rendan is the one who's distracting us because he keeps on sending chats. Uh, I wonder if he's ready for his own session. Um, no, Tlioni, like I said, I asked for permission from 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 Gatliaho to share the clip. It was just a clip only, right? <laughs> And you guys say say amazing stuff in in these clips. So I'm gonna also check with Ferdy uh, for this consult. You guys say amazing stuff, which helps the next person. Um, yes, yeah, we record the consult. I wanna make sure that um, you guys are on top of your game. So the the the, the recording is maybe just to also confirm the recording is between you and whoever you're consulting with and me as the managing director, because I need to hold them accountable that they are feeding my candidates um, good things. Uh, how do I plan PRI period? And I think this has, was already responded. Yeah, maybe what I'll also do, uh, Gatleho, happy for you to share your slides with the, with the team, with the okay. candidates. Okay. Yes, I'll also share the slides. I think one of the things I liked was your that, that table, the top part of your five days PRI, and the top part of your eating, planning everything. I, I agree with that. If you're gonna be stressing about what meal you're gonna eat, it's taking away the time which you need to now actually study. Or if you're stressing of saying today now I have to go groceries because I need to eat one, two, three, four, five. You need to buy all your groceries for the six, six days on day zero. No going out uh, for grocery shopping, but for just relaxation. Um, All right, I think that is all. Thank you so much, Katleho. I'm just gonna quickly check. I'll confirm in the chat uh, for the team. Oh, Renan has already started, uh, uh, stated that it's gonna start at 9, 9.20. But those who've got comments, um, please drop them on the chat and uh, we'll take it, there, take it from there. Thank you so much, Katleho. Thank you. I tried to drop them in the chat to the slides, but uh, I don't have access. So I'll just have to email them to the engineering team, but they will yes. share them with you guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Katleho. And uh, maybe for those, um, um, as, as, as we've wrapped up the session, I see Randani says that he'll start at 9.20. So it means that we've got 20 min uh, uh, 10 minutes. Anyone who has um, challenges, the online team is here. Who I, I always see comments on Viva Engage to say that where do I get the link? I'm assuming that because all of us are here, there was no link issues. Um, so if you have any challenges either accessing the material, maybe we can use this time to engage on that. One, that is one, because that's admin. Two, maybe just to also warm up for the next session, um, please no, just uh, on the comment note what you're looking forward to for the two tasks which have been covered. I'll also just take um, um, notes and I'll also just share with Randani and as he's going through the session, I'll also just use it as a tick box uh, to say that he has covered everything, but otherwise where he's able to respond to during the session will definitely do. Maybe, yeah, the question, what are you looking forward to, to today's session for the two tasks, the accounting and the math task? Um, and two, if you have any administrative uh, questions in terms of uh, accessing Viva or accessing the material, please also um, do drop them on the chat or you can raise your hand and we can engage. <laughs>